Students come to Middlebury from a wide range of backgrounds, different countries, different cultures, and different schools. But Middlebury students all have one important thing in common. They're smart. Middlebury's admissions staff has already determined that each of you is totally capable of academic success at Middlebury. Remember them? They're smart too, and they're actually really good at their job. Another thing you all have in common is that you are all adjusting to a new academic environment at Middlebury. For some of you, this environment may feel a lot like what you experienced in high school. And when you need help, which you will, you'll know how to find it. But for most of you, Millibury's workload, academic culture, and expectations are new and unfamiliar. And when you need help, which you will, you may not be sure where to look. One thing you'll learn about Millibury is that our students like to help each other. So we asked some current students to talk about their academic transitions to Middlebury so that all of you can hear from them about what they found helpful when they were in your shoes. Like all of you, these students had high expectations for themselves, but they also had a lot of questions and a lot of fears. I thought it was going to be hard. I remember wondering if I was going to make it all four years. I was very nervous about what classes I was going to take and what I wanted to do with my time here. So I spent a lot of time that summer planning on my class schedule, um, like years in advance. Um, for me, I came from a public education school system. So transitioning from that into a private institution was difficult. I was actually trying to focus more on like, what sports am I going to be doing? Like, what class am I going to be joining? <laughs> and then I come here and it's like, registration and you have to pick your classes. <laughs> For some of them, the first challenge they came across was class registration. I came in to Middlebury wanting to do economics, um, but because of registration, I didn't manage to get into the class, um, and so I ended up trying computer science. You know, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's you know, let's try what this is, and then I ended up taking a class called Intro into Computer Animation, and it's probably now going to be my career for the rest of my <laughs> life. Some students did get the classes that they wanted. But then they discovered that they didn't love the path as much as they thought. I was always the person that I thought I needed to have like the next five to ten years of my life figured out. I'm going to be an IP and E major with a focus in East Asia. And basically I started off doing that and I realized that wasn't for me. And that hit me kind of hard. I'm not going to necessarily be following the path that I thought I would initially. That can be a little unnerving. But discovering an unexpected academic path can also be exciting. I've always been like, all right, this didn't work out. Mid probably has something better to offer. These students also struggled to figure out how to interact with professors at Middlebury. I think for me there was a huge culture of cultural difference on how to like approach people who are your elders. So like having to call professors by their first name sometimes, like I still don't do it. I always say professor something. I remember Googling how to write an email to a professor. <laughs> That's a good do you difference. use the word professor when you're addressing a professor? <laughs> do you need to email in advance to go to office hours? What exactly are office hours? This is a totally reasonable question. At Middlebury, a professor's office hours are the times they set aside for their students to stop by and talk. And they really want you to do that. But not all students get that right away. It took me a year to build up the courage to go to office hours. Um, and it was crazy because every class I've ever had, as soon as like my professor was done going through the syllabus, they would say, if you have absolutely any questions, anything that you want to come talk to me about, come talk to me. In high school, I thought that to go to office hours, I needed a question or I needed like a big problem with my life and I'd have to like have something ready to go, <laughs> like help me with this question. Um, so I think it was a huge surprise to like realize that I could just show up to office hours and like chat with a professor and they're willing and happy to do that. I feel bad for this, but I don't think I've ever scheduled an office hour. I'm just like, hey, <laughs> question, <laughs> you know, and then like, and they're always like, oh, come in, sit down. And then like, you may have other professors that are like, oh, um, I wasn't expecting you, but like, come in. When I go to my uh, American literature major uh, advisors, 
office for office hours, like, it always begins with, hello friend, how are you doing? You know, how actually, how are you doing? You know, with, you know, just being a student here. For most students, the biggest adjustments involve getting comfortable with the pace and the basic practices of college academic work, learning the best ways to study, developing strong research and writing skills, and planning the best way to manage a heavy workload. Coming in as a first year, like you sit in classes with like sophomores and juniors and seniors, and it's pretty intimidating. In high school, um, it's a little bit different. It's like you have an assignment, you do it that night, and then it's like the next day you wait to see what the next one is, or you have a paper, you get it done, and, and you don't have to think about that next paper for a little while, I feel. Um, and it's, it's not like that in, in college. I write really long sentences because in Arabic you just don't use, you know, full stops <laughs> unless you're like done with the paragraph. And so like my professor was just like, I understand where you're coming from, but why don't you go check out like the CDLR or the peer tutors. It's important to remember that when every new student comes with a different type of preparation, questions and confusion are inevitable. And so when I like started taking chemistry classes at Middlebury, I'd be in class and like the professor would say something and students are just like just spitting out these things. And I'm like, were we supposed to know this before class? Because I was like, I did not know this. No question about it, these moments do not feel good. And like because of that, I would just feel so fearful to talk in class because I'm just like, I'm going to say something that is so wrong and everyone's just gonna laugh. But letting fear of embarrassment hold you back can also lead to bigger problems, because when you don't talk in class or ask questions, you can't get the help you need. It took me a few failed exams to realize I didn't know how to study, um, but I was too embarrassed to like, go to professors about it because I kind of hoped that if I didn't remind them that I had, was failing all the exams, they would forget. And I always had this idea in the back of my head, like. I do not want to go bother these people with my <laughs> stuff, like, you know. Freshman year of, like, failed exams, I'd be like, who am I? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what? Like, oh, you don't do that. <laughs> that in my mind, I was, like, a bad student, which isn't true, but was the narrative I was telling myself because I also didn't fail exams in high school, and that was new to me, and thought, like, that must mean I'm a failure, and the professors wouldn't want to waste their time. There was even this point in time in which I was like considering transferring because I was just like, okay, I don't know if this is the place for me. Like, I don't feel as if I belong, intellectually speaking. When you feel overwhelmed, it's easy to isolate yourself and to imagine that everyone else is having an easy time while you're the only one struggling. But remember what we said at the beginning of this video? All Middlebury students are smart. And because you're smart, it will make sense to you that Middlebury provides the many student support resources we do, because we know that the second thing Middlebury students have in common is this. You will all need and deserve help. I guess I realized that, oh, maybe I didn't need any help back in high school was because I didn't have the option of getting help or the resources that I needed. So, and then coming here, um, there were resources that were meant for me to utilize to maximize my academic potential. So what are some of those resources? Well, there's the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Research, also known as the CTLR, which offers support with time management, tutors, writing assistance, and lots of other kinds of academic support. And then one time I actually went and I sat with a peer writing tutor, and then she was telling me, I don't know why you're holding back, I'm getting paid to do this. And I was like, what? You're getting paid? To help me? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'm getting paid to just literally sit with you and help you work in your paper. And I was like, all right, let's do this, you know? And if I write an essay and I'm not sh confident about how it's going or where I could like make it more focused, I go to the CTLR. And um, also if I need um, tutoring for a particular class, I can also come to the CTLR to find peer tutors. I struggled freshman year, freshman first semester, because I wasn't adequately prepared. Um, so I guess like centers like the CTEL are like drop-in writing tutors and other resources on campus like that. Um, we coming, actively making an effort to come to those things really helped. Middlebury's librarians are amazing resources for when you are trying to figure out how to research a paper or answer a question. I came to the library and I went to like where 
the research desk is and I was like please help <laughs> and she was like what's wrong and I was like I have a paper that's right all you have to do is tell the librarian that you have an assignment the librarian can help you figure out what you need to complete it and whether you need help looking for resources how to cite them or some other sort of assistance librarians love teaching students how to find what they need She's like, hey, okay, I'm gonna walk you through this site, and we're gonna you're gonna start off with like this huge number of options, but we're gonna reduce that so you can get what you actually want. I was like, oh my goodness, I thought that I could do this on my own, and I for sure couldn't. And I was like, I loved that like I came here to speak with someone who can actually help me out with this. Your professors are another great resource. Remember, they're not here to judge you, it's their job to help you learn. I went to my first year seminar professor the day before my 10 page research paper was due and he said, what do you have? And I said, an idea. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll work with that then. See, no judgment. I was so afraid of that meeting of like going into my professor and saying, this 10 page paper is due tomorrow and I haven't written any of it. And he didn't bat an eyelash and was just like, okay, let's talk about it. Let's figure out what you need to do. And yeah, not recommended practice, but now I know that as well. <laughs> it's okay to ask questions. Even if you find them stupid or dumb, someone else may have the same question that they're in fear of asking. And so like you're alleviating so much tension. Who said that every moment of college was supposed to be easy? When you're trying to learn new subjects and develop new skills, all in a new environment, struggling is normal, and being confused is okay, and even failure is okay. It may not feel great, but it doesn't mean that something's gone horribly wrong. It's okay for there to be some uncertainty in your life. You know, there's, you know it's, it's not the end of the road. There's, there's something else for you. It took a lot of, like, tears, <laughs> um, along with opening up to people it was also really difficult because like everyone who I was talking to was like it gets better and then in the back of my head I'm like okay I'm sure it does but like I wanted it to get better now like whatever accident befalls you I think like turns out well in the end my supervisor um, my research supervisor now always says when I tell him like oh I screwed up he's like great you failed now we have a better success story being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel is realizing you're in a tunnel and you want to get out. Uh, what you expressed earlier about, um, you know, just feeling lonely and in that tunnel and looking toward that light, I think it's not something that's necessarily unique to the first year in, in college. I think it's a part of growing up and maturing and becoming adults in a really, uh, uh, a demanding and, and stressful environment. One thing these students have learned is that it's okay to talk about what's going on. Middlebury expects that all its students will need help, and not just for academic problems. It's okay to ask. Life is unexpected and there can be things like you can plan really well for that week and then that week something happens that makes work seem secondary. It never came to my mind that it could be a reason, you know, that if something is happening at home or something else is going on in your life that you'll be able to get excused from a class or get an extension on a paper. Extensions apply for things that aren't related to work. Try reaching out to your commons dean. Um, and I remember, you know, the first time I went to my dean and I was like, I'm really sorry, but I'm like, can I, you know, can you help me with this? Oh, the deans are great. <laughs> what? I think I'm too close to a dean. You can also schedule an appointment with a counselor at the Pardon Center. Depression, anxiety, or feeling overwhelmed and homesick. Whatever challenges you're dealing with, they can help. Mental illness and, you know, stress and all of those things are things that affect people on this campus. We have to acknowledge that and put ourselves first. Because it's not going to go away if we keep ignoring it. Um, and a lot of the resources that have been mentioned earlier, like counseling and those sorts of things. Like, there's support in lots of different forms, depending on where you are. And life, life doesn't stop because you have academics. <laughs> Caring for your whole self is incredibly important. Middlebury even has a health and wellness education program with resources to help you sleep, 
practice mindfulness, explore the role of substance use in your life, learn about stress management, and lots of other areas that can contribute to or detract from your overall health as a person. With help and commitment to your own learning and growth, you'll find strategies that allow you to do your work and take good care of yourself. Knowing yourself is very important, I guess. So if I know that I'm someone that panics, if I know I have a lot of work to don't get it done, then I start early. When you uh, felt like writing, right, you know? But like, if you're just trying so hard to like get to that next page, it, I, it's just better to just stop writing, mm -hmm. walk away, do something else. It's okay to close the computer and take a walk. Or it's okay to just close your eyes and if you fall asleep, your your body's tired, my love. You know what I mean? It's like, go to bed. Great thing about Middlebury is that there's so much work to do. <laughs> you can actually procrastinate doing some work. You can procrastinate from doing other work with work. And that's right, productive procrastination. It's not a competition to who pulled the most all-nighters. It's about Taking care of yourself and getting your work done. Sleep is very important, so the more you sleep, the more sometimes you can get more work done. Coming to Middlebury in the, the first year, um, I realized that I will be going to bed at night just having an assignment unfinished all the time. And, like, that's okay. You, you Once again, like, you have to find the time for yourself, the self-care. Middlebury understands that every student needs time and help to find their own path here, and that every student's path will be different. There isn't just one path towards success, that sometimes your path will include like failure. I guess it's okay, like if you take a semester off, it's okay if you graduate late, it doesn't mean that you failed. Um, like you can still be successful even if your path doesn't look similar to everyone else's. Never forget that the challenges you may be experiencing are normal, and they're expected, and that with patience and a willingness to share your challenges with friends and resources, you will find your balance. If you develop the, the, um, the ability to like ask questions and like just take one step further, I guess, then you become more confident in like your place at Middlebury. We're all in this together kind of thing kind of had the realization at one point, like, Charlie, why were you, like, so worried, so concerned? Like, you should have had a little bit more confidence going in that, yeah, you can, you can definitely do this. Yeah, don't forget, you can do this.